guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I am just gonna jump right into last week's videos. Real quick though, before we do, today's recap is sponsored by Nature's Willow, which I will talk about in just a little bit. Okay, first video was planting spring crops. So we just, it's like a, every year. <laughs> I do the same video <laughs> every single year, except for this year. Well, it changes- Do you get tired? Do you get tired of it? Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, do I get tired of doing the same things yeah, every year? Yeah, like the no. spring crops. No, I just, I'm afraid that like other people will get other people you like it. oh you've already done this video but it's just like what we're doing in the garden yeah. and i realized that our audience probably there's like a, a group of you guys who followed us through thick and thin and then there's new people coming in all the time and people probably leaving sure. all the time so it's like a constant yeah so you know it's likely that a good portion of people watching our videos this is the first planting spring crops that they've ever seen yeah. well, well. it does change a little bit every year because i plant carrots in a different bed <laughs> <laughs> or i decide to plant different things like this year i'm trying to stick with the things that we actually eat so i'm not going to grow any kale we don't eat kale um or i'm not going to grow any swiss chard i don't like swiss chard i like the basics <laughs> pretty much yeah. we're kind of like basics in the vegetable department i like root crops I do like root crops as well. Those are like my favorite. Like roasted root vegetables. Yeah. Like one of my favorite sides. So simple too. Yeah. Oh, and easy to grow. Which reminds me, planting potatoes is like top on my list for next week. It's just been so weird. You guys know the weather has been so weird. Doing potatoes on the new property? Yeah. That, nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, potatoes will be in a completely different spot because our cut flower garden will no longer be able to house a bunch of veggies and it has been able to up to this point but now that we have the rose garden and then we've got the dahlia patch those are two solid areas that aren't going to really change and then we'll have the perennial section like i have a lot of annuals in there that i need to save room for i'm going to yeah. take some of them out to my parents house so too we've got a project we'll work on out there but well i think also you could limit like the amount of each annual that you yeah, plant exactly like, and you i don't need to have like a whole row of some of them snapdragons yeah. yeah yeah and i've kind of kind of curbed that a little bit but i'll also give a lot of our seedlings away i'll plant whatever makes sense you know mm -hmm. after i kind of figure out the layout okay first question is from nancy how do you keep the worms out of your broccoli you know i try to not spray ever in our vegetable garden like ever so i will put up with a lot in our vegetable patch before i will actually take action if i do notice a big problem i usually spray the worms with bt it's a bacillus thuringiensis it's a bacteria that's naturally found in soil uh, i don't think there's a spray that you can get more natural than that and it doesn't target pollinators it's not going to hurt anything except for the caterpillars on the plant um, they ingest it and it Technically, caterpillars turn into pollinators, though, don't they? Well, moths. I don't know if moths. We don't are... have like monarchs, so I've heard people. We talk do about... have some. Really? Yeah, there was a few out in the cut flower patch, like on the zinnias last year. Oh. Yeah, I but have to stop what I'm doing and watch. Yeah, the the caterpillars that you're spraying, they end up turning into like those white moths. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sharon said, what is the tree over your left shoulder at 402 on the other side of the fence? Is that a black lace elderberry? It is very close. It is an instant karma elderberry. So the difference being black lace has the black lacy leaves. Instant karma has a little bit wider, like broader leaves, uh, but they're green and yellow. Really pretty. Uh, I took after that last year and made it into a tree form, which really transformed that space. Both of those plants love our area. They do. Black lace and instant karma. Yeah. They're probably termed a native, Erin. I wonder if they are. They probably are. So long as they get moisture in our area, they really do very well. Sally said, what's the name of the giant markers your parents are selling at Andrews? Oh, and the marker you always use to write the name with. Now, I'm not sure because I threw away the packaging on the marker, the, the ID tags, which were so pretty. They're silver, like galvanized silver, kind of like pretty shape. Mm -hmm. They came in a pack of seven or eight of them and then typically this is the marker i like to use it's a garden marker is what it's called dp industries inc it lasts longer than any other marker i have ever used and they're not messy like you can get those what are those one markers that make a big mess like you push them in and then like a bunch of ink will come out oh, and they're supposed to be really they, long lasting like you shake them and they've got a the little ball yeah. inside those, oh, are I don't the, know. those are the worst this is the best marker i've ever used it says xylene free. I remember having one of those as a kid and my dad was always like really, he was like kind of an artist. Uh -huh. Like he could draw well. He wasn't like an artist by profession, but um, he would make like garage, that's the only way we had any money as kids is doing gar gar garage sales. Mm -hmm. But I remember he would do like these, he'd use those to make 
big, you know, yard signs. Mm -hmm. And he, I always felt like my dad made the best garage sale signs and everybody else had lame ones yeah because they would always use small ones and he'd get like big poster board Mm -hmm. and use one of those markers to like fill in nice and dark and black and fully visible so you could really read it yeah you could read it it wasn't like yeah yeah i see some real poor signage out there yeah it's like completely unreadable from a car i see that in like business signage too like big big signs like up on the big poles and they pick the worst fonts sometimes that are hard to read yeah i don't like that when businesses pick um like uh what do you call that like scrolly fonts any kind of script like a script font yeah and it's just i don't know everything needs to be big block letters like to make it easy walmart well there you go yeah you're not going to mistake what that is no no for sure so some people have very nice signs <laughs> and that on a positive note uh susan said is it possible that the compacted areas in the beds are where the cats like to lay down no i don't think any amount of our cats laying down on a space would make them like compacted like they are um but the garlic i am happy to report that the garlic in the one side of that bed that just i have troubles with anything coming up it's growing so far like there's green shoots so Hopefully, we'll see what happens with it. Rebecca said, am I supposed to take out six inches of dirt, then replace it with new compost before planting? Someone said bugs lay eggs in that area during the winter. There could be some bug eggs in the soil, but I don't think taking six inches of soil out is necessary at all. I've or never, will help you. Yeah, I've never taken soil out of my raised beds ever. It kind of disappears on its own. <laughs> like Things just settle, and you're like, where is this going? I mean, our beds aren't lined at the bottom, so, you know, it could break well, down and some of that, tra- that soil is like transferring into plants well it also right? comes off on the roots of your plants too yeah. when you you know remove your plants so some of you do lose some there i always find myself topping mine up with compost even if it's above grade like above the level of the the raised bed i feel like that's better than too low yeah tamara said you mentioned that alliums were heavy feeders my garlic has been in since late fall and i did them in the soil prior to planting that's the best step mending that soil before you plant is really a good thing should i feed them again this spring if so what would you use yes you should feed them again um in fact you could probably do twice with alliums you could probably feed with garden tone is what i would use or you could use plant tone yeah um, you could use tomato tone if that's what you have. That anything would be helpful for the garlic plants. But you could do that, you know, March, April, and then you could do it again end of May. And then typically we're harvesting right around Fourth of July, so it gives it enough time to utilize all of those goodies. A Windbush 99 said, "I noticed you covered your drip line. I've been leaving mine on top of the soil to prevent clogging, but it looks so much nicer covered. Am I good to lightly cover? It won't clog from the outside. It, usually, if it's going to clog, it's something that gets inside the tubing." The only reason why we leave any kind of tubing on top of the soil sometimes is just long enough to where we can test the water system and make sure everything's like the water's flowing properly. Sometimes it's very helpful to see that visual because you can't see it once it's, you know, buried. We were just talking about that Mm -hmm. the other night uh, because you and Paul went through and like trouble, they did a troubleshoot day of all of our drip zones, repaired all of the, the whatever. Yeah. breaks and tears and also bless bless you too for doing that i do not have patience for those sorts of projects but um yeah so they're all good to go we let them run a little bit and then we start mulching over the top of them it's a it is kind of a pain in the butt when they're buried too deep because then you're especially with perennials mm-hmm. you can't see your perennials early in the season and you're not uh, i mean especially for us because you know you're you're planting like a mad woman mm-hmm. and so there's always new stuff out there and you're always kind of wondering like did we did we get the drip in that spot? Because you can't remember if you buried it mm-hmm. or not. Yeah. Bessie said, how are the winter sowing plants doing? Will you be planting them soon? I'll show you. I will go get an example. Okay, I'm gonna move my computer. Okay, clearly this one has not been opened yet. This is a sundial lupin. Let me find the end of the tape. This is pretty much how all of them are looking back there, minus the artichokes, which they might still come up. I had issues with mine germinating anyway even when I started them inside. So it could be possible my seed was too old or they might just need more heat. But all the poppies and lupins look like this. Ta-da. I have not watered them one time. Not one time. I was telling Aaron last night that I had kind of one of those stomach drop moments where I was like, oh, I always say I'm gonna take care of my, my winter sowing and then I always forget, which I did. And so I went running back there because I was going to give them a drink of water, poor things. 
but they didn't need it and they had all started to sprout and they looked awesome for crying out loud this tape is really good what kind of tape is this just white duct tape i don't know it's the kind you guys should be using <laughs> it sticks really well anyway there's one two th one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen plants in this one container so now that i know that they're this tall i'm gonna probably untop all of them untop uncover all of them and then we can pop the tops back over them at night for a couple of days and then i can plant them out all right guys like i said today's video is sponsored by nature's willow which is a company that specializes in pain sort of management products using plant ingredients so they're plant-based um, mainly like white willow helichrysum geranium peppermint that sort of thing they smell really good uh, they actually sponsored a recap beginning of March mm -hmm, yeah. or so. And they had such a good response. So I just wanted to say thank you, first of all, for you know supporting the companies that support us. That means a whole lot, a whole lot to us. But I was introduced to this product by my mom, who was introduced to it at a garden show mm -hmm. somewhere. And she swore by these. And she kept yeah, trying she to push them. Yeah, she talked about it a bunch. <laughs> yeah, she did. And they carry it down at their garden center now because my mom believes in it so much. But uh, she used the pain relieving patches primarily, which is primarily what I use along with their pain relieving cream. Uh, but she used it after she broke her ankle and would have like one or two of these around her ankle. I actually have one on my sciatic right now. Um, it's just a really nice kind of soothing, it just cooling sort of thing. It just really hel is helpful. Uh, so I wanna show you what one of these looks like because I don't think I did in the last, the last time. I think the, after we did that, um, recap the thing that nature's willow saw that you guys were most interested in was the pain relieving bundle which had the pain relieving patches this is what they look like and then also the soothing bath soak and the pain relieving cream and you guys they are offering 20 percent off with the code mom 20 and if you use that code they will automatically for your order they will automatically throw in a box of these pain patches for you and to share with your friends as well so i just peeled off the back it's sort of sticky on that side so you just find the area that hurts which you know this it's is all my, over your body this is my pruning hand and you just put them on like that right there so i mean i'm gonna rock this then for the next few hours but it does provide relief like i'm doing a lot of pruning right now and i couldn't deal with a little bit of carpal tunnel i don't know for those of you who are younger enjoy it because you'll start <laughs> needing these more and more as you you know get a little bit older Anyway, thank you Nature's Willow so much for sponsoring today's recap video. You guys, we will link their website down below. It's natureswillow.com. Nature's Willow or you can make a pilgrimage to Andrew Seed in Ontario, yes, Oregon can. and buy some there. <laughs> you feel like coming to Eastern Oregon? Yeah, shop. You can shop locally here. Yeah. Next video is starting a small backyard landscape installation for my sister Monica and her husband Nick at their brand new house that they built last year. They moved in late enough in the year to where they didn't really have a time, have time to uh, establish flower beds and really think through what they wanted for this space, which I'm glad they didn't because I was happy to be able to get get in there huh. and get involved in the project. Um, they knew they wanted raised beds, but we were kind of thinking through all the different options. You know, they were initially thinking, well, we'll just build some taller that are, you know, at the bottom of the slope, their backyard is sloped. Um, and then we'll do some shorter at the top. But then I thought, well, your walking pathways are, <laughs> you know, kind of like slanted. It's yeah. just, let's fix, let's fix the slope issue. Um, so we were talking through all those details. We thought, well, maybe we could do it ourselves at first so glad can you imagine no we hired fruitland landscaping uh, i think that's the name of pedro's company pedro's an awesome guy to work with his guys are awesome they're fast and they are like a team they're a team i mean you can see him placing a stone and then they step back look at it they get a chisel out and like it is just flush everything is beautiful so happy i'm <laughs> so happy with how it's going and they came back this last week and they worked a little bit more on it and they've got one day more of work to do which i'm probably not going to film because i think we got the flavor of the project in that this video here um, but we will be back to do we're going to build some raised beds and put in a bunch of plants and you know kind of deck it out a little bit we do want to leave some space because monica is excited about like picking up things here and there that, sh that really strike her and that she really likes so and then nick is gonna he's got a project in his mind that he wants to do some kind of a like a screen hmm. along one of their fences that he wants to build himself so anyway we'll go through all of those details as the project kind of unfolds but whitney said are we want we are wanting to do a very similar rock wall slash terrace in our garden the same size does anyone know a rough cost for this 
I don't even know the cost yet. I will get the bill <laughs> probably next week. Do you know roughly, like I'll be able to, it'll be so different, I think, depending on. Yeah, I mean, you might find, <clears throat> you know, you, you could go price it out piece by piece. You could go look at what rock costs and mm -hmm. you could add that up. Like it's usually a per pound mm -hmm. type of situation. I'll be um, able to tell you how many pounds of rock they went through. Roughly. Yeah. And then, um, you know, for, it's so hard. You're looking at probably somewhere between like $50 and a hundred bucks per hour mm -hmm. per guy that's working. Um, Which they deserve it. Yeah, it's, These guys it's deserve it. hard work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they also, it's like a make hay while the sun shines kind of situation. Around here, there's like several months where it's it's hard to get work in. So you got to make enough money during the season yeah. to, to you know, provide for yourself in the winter. So, um, yeah. I, it, but, you know, knowing how many hours. And then, you know, we've experienced uh, some crews just work so slow. And they take forever to do something that yeah. could have been done a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, so that whole like dollar per hour thing can, can be a little weird too. Yeah. Cause you can have a crew like Pedro's crew is fast Yeah. and they get stuff. So it's worth it to, you know, pay them more. Mm -hmm. There's some crews that could charge half as much, but take twice as long as Pedro. Right. I'll let you know, like uh, rock wise, how much rock we ended up using. I hate to give prices cause everything is so different based on, you know, so many different factors. Um, I would guess, I mean, it's going to be thousands. Mm -hmm. It'll be under 10, but it won't be under five. I think it'll be between five and 10 mm -hmm. for the labor and rock. Well worth it though. I mean, you put that investment in at the beginning of a project like this one, and you'll have a landscape that you're happy with forever. You won't be fighting water, you know, running all over the place. You won't be fighting that slope. And that makes me very happy. Maybe more happy than even before. Cause I feel like I'm approaching this project a little bit more like you would. Really? A little bit because like before I'd just be like, yeah, let's just slap some raised beds up. Let's just do it. Oh. And this time I'm slowing down a little bit. I'm learning from you, Aaron. Slowing <laughs> down and trying to make... You mean you're putting water in ahead of time? Yes, actually. <laughs> we do have all the water in. And power? Yeah. Well, yeah. No power. <laughs> no, well, that's something that I don't think we're going to do in this space. But anyway. DDD123 said, looks lovely, but how will you get the mower to the lawn? Their mower is very small and I think they're going to be able to, it's pretty lightweight. There's just going to be one stair on the other side. So you can just, you know, bump it down the stair and walk it to the grass, push it to the grass. So I don't think it's going to be a problem. They were not, Monica and Nick were not concerned. I asked them like, is this going to be a, a deal breaker with the stairs on either side? Is it, does it bother you? It didn't bother him at all. Um, Jazz N said, "Would you? Why did you not plant the nectarine tree in the ground? We planted the same tree in our backyard, and it's budding and full of leaves. Well, one because we don't really know exactly the layout of everything. Um, two, I think it looks pretty in a pot. Having a fruit tree like that in a pot, there's just something very charming about it. We've had a dwarf peach tree in that pot for, in a pot in our landscape for like four years, yeah. five years at this point, and it's starting to bud out. And I'm thinking it's going to bloom here really soon." So I think so long as you keep them moist in the winter, I think that's the biggest thing, making sure the container is good enough size and uh, making sure to keep it moist in the winter and you're pretty good to go. Now this nectarine though, it said the zone is pending. Oh really? It's such a new variety, which is crazy to me that they just don't have any zone information. It's sure. kind of like the Arctic fire yellow dogwood that we were talking about last week, how on one of the old tags, it said it was a zone two through eight, but the new tags, if you were to get that plant now, newer, yeah. the tags say two through seven, because they were getting reports from a bunch of people in zone eights where it just wasn't thriving like it should. So they've kind of adjusted the zone down and it just has to happen because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you just don't know until well, it's been tested know, and tested and tested. We had that conversation with uh, Classic Caladiums, mm -hmm. in, which is uh, part of the Proven Winners, you know, crew. But they, they grow their Caladiums in Florida. And they, like, they know, well, it works in Florida. Mm -hmm. But they were pretty much just like shipping their Caladiums within their local area. Mm -hmm. So they didn't really have to think about, you know, well, what if we go to some more northern climates? Like, what are the parameters of mm -hmm. how... Warm does the soil need to be exactly before, right. you know, they'll thrive and stuff like that. So I think sometimes those, those growers, they just are in their local area and they're mm -hmm. not hundred percent sure outside, right? Uh, outside of that, how it'll do. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kathy said, this transformation is amazing. Tell me more about this nectarine. How long will it live in this large pot? I assume it's at least a 26 inch pot. Yeah. I, I don't know the exact dimensions of that one. It's the largest size terracotta pot that I can ever get a hold of. Um, and it will live in there so long, like I said, as it's watered, uh, it can live 
a long time because that tree will only get four to six feet tall and wide. Sometimes those types of plants too, once it reaches the bottom of the pot, they'll root right into the ground, which I think is what's happening with our peach tree. I think it's rooted through the drain oh. holes and it's down into our native soil now. Uh, I probably should up pop that one. You just cut the roots at the bottom? You can, like bonsai yeah. style. Hmm. Root pruning. Uh, Kimmy G said, did I see you guys spreading mortar on the backside of some of those top stones? See the guys spreading mortar on the back? I don't think so. I think it's all dry stacked. I don't think there's mortar. The best Bible story said, where was the greenhouse and raised beds you already have completed? Those are at Aaron's sister's house. So we've got two sister projects going on right now, which is so fun. I actually went to Alyssa's house, so Aaron's sister's house, day before yesterday, and I set up an arbor that we thought we were gonna use, and things just aren't scaling up quite right, because the area, and this happens, you know, projects evolve, and we need to like be able to shift and do something a little bit different, but the area just is so beautiful to look at, just the way it is, without a fence in the way we were gonna do a little picket fence and arbors, and I just thought, let's just maybe live with it this season, maybe not doing the fence and arbors, because it looks like it's almost masking the area. I don't wanna see those copper cap raised beds, and you know, mm -hmm. have Alyssa be able to enjoy the view instead of just like looking out at a fence and not being able to see much of what's inside. So I, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but that's where those things are. We are gonna be back there, I think Monday, mm -hmm. this next Monday, um, to put some more fluff out, which is gonna be fun. What are we fun do? Stuff. There's gonna be like, um, there's a compost bin. A potting bench. Potting bench. Uh, there's a rain barrel. There's a fire pit. There's a bird bath. Um, there's some shelving for the There's some shelving for the greenhouse. greenhouse. Um, Alyssa's already started planting, which is awesome. I think I'm gonna swap the planters out. I put those plants out and then we had some pretty gnarly weather yeah. come through and they got nipped. They'll be fine. I think I'll pull the hookers out, repot them, bring them here and just like let them grow on in the greenhouse a little bit. Um, but I think I wanna swap those out for something fresh. We're getting closer than to being able to put out summer stuff anyway. So that'll be good. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Debbie said, looking forward to the updates. Question, are you still helping to landscape the big property of your friends where they were having trouble with some of their trees dying? Did they figure out the issue? I'm not sure they ever did figure out the issue, did they? No, I think- um, There's guesses. Yeah, they replaced several trees mm -hmm. uh, in the fall last year, um, but we'll be back there, I'm sure. Yeah. We'll be back there this year. We've got to let everything kind of leaf out and see where things are at yeah. at this point. Next video was planting a beautiful crabapple tree and boxwoods by the flower shed. That was so fun. Got my Indian magic crabapple tree out there, uh, which is a tree I've wanted for a while because your parents have one that's gorgeous and I've just always admired that tree. And then the two cone boxwoods. I've never seen winter gem boxwoods look that beautiful. Like that trim and tidy mm -hmm. and tall. Like they're the right scale for that area. Hey bud. Hi. Are you gonna shang something with that garden steak? He's running around with a like a three foot green garden steak. He loves it. Can you ever explain what shang meant? Shang is like shang shang. Like when things clank together, yeah. like two metal out, they go shang. So he uses it as a as a verb. Yeah, right? I'm gonna go shang. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna shang you. Shang something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh anyway. That was, that was a very fun project. Kay Hall said, have you ever thought of growing wisteria? Yes, I actually have a wisteria that doesn't bloom, so. Invasive. There, no, it's actually not. I mean, it's a very fast growing vine, but it doesn't pop up anywhere. It's very tidy to itself. It's Here, got quite, right? no, there are some varieties that will stay to themselves oh, and some that will not. Gotcha. Um, but it's got quite the trunk at this point. And we just left it alone, so I'm hoping, well, maybe We've been, you know, taken after it at the wrong time. I've heard like if you plant it too deep or something, it won't. I don't think that's the problem, but who knows? But I love them. I think they're gorgeous. Uh, Kim said, "Have you thought about uh, placing the espalier pear tree in back of the flower shed? That would look pretty neat. I think that would look really neat. The Asian oh, pear. Yeah. I think right because it's on the south side of that flower shed. I think it would do really well. Could you do espalier all along the back?" Well, that one will eventually. It's not a very wide shed. Hmm. I mean, you, uh, yeah. It, I don't know that it would go the ex the whole distance, but I think it would go far enough to where it would f it, like, almost frame it in. Yeah. It'd be really pretty. We should do that. Yeah. Terry said, in addition to adding a gutter on uh, your flower shed, have you considered adding a rain barrel system? Well, if things keep going the way they are right now, we woke up to, it just poured either, it was like early this morning. Yeah. Woke up to puddles and there's dark clouds in the in the horizon there but you know usually we don't think about it because we 
typically average nine to 11 inches of rainfall a year, then you can collect barely any of that off of a, I mean, we'd be able to water a few pots, you yeah. know, a year off of that, um, off of a rain barrel system. You looked into it once, didn't you? Yeah, I yeah, I looked into it um, on our house. Uh-huh. And I talked to Greg Whitstock. And Barn, yeah. Yeah, and Barn. I talked to Greg Whitstock because they, they sell, I mean, it's like a, what do you call that? Like a modular system where you can make as big of a reservoir in the ground as you want mm-hmm. um, and store the water. But we just don't get like... It just doesn't seem worth it. The, re- the yeah. return isn't good en- enough for the There's investment. There's just not enough either. rain to really kind of make it worth it. Right all the effort and all we that. talked about though like if we could get two because we're getting a good solid two three or more rainstorms a week right now mm-hmm. what if we maintain that yeah what would our what would things be like well every spring we get rain and we just think like man if it could just keep going the whole summer and it never does but you know we can always dream yeah our winters are erratic maybe our summers can be too yeah well like that one uh winter that we got 40 some inches or whatever of snow 52 52 yeah maybe if we could just get 40 inches of rain wouldn't that be just something c nielsen said gosh it feels so good to see beautiful things going in the ground again question on crab apples do you find that they sucker and require maintenance some of them do yeah um there's sucker stopper you can we've showed it in a video before uh, you can use on the suckers to help them from keep you know, it won't hurt the tree but it'll keep the suckers from coming back uh, but i usually just clip mine off just kind of keep it a maintenance thing and they usually are pretty pretty good i did notice there's actually a couple starting on that tree so i'll have to keep on it LKJ said, how fun to see the orchard meadow maturing. I can't believe I'm going to ask this, but what's with the bald spots in the grass and with all the flowers? How did you, how do you fix the grass? Time. Bald spots in the grass. Oh, in the orchard? Yeah, it's like kind of patchy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, There's still weeds in there too. Yeah, well, Bethany went through this last week because we have purple mustard in there and some kind of a wild lettuce. And she's just going to like go after a little bit at a time and start roguing those things out. And we'll eventually get on top of it. I don't really see much purple mustard in there anymore. That's the one that kind of spreads like wildfire. And it's not it's a noxious weed and you don't want it. Uh, it's pretty, <laughs> unfortunately. It like, has a very pretty purple bloom on it. Uh, looked very beautiful with the bulbs, but that you don't want to keep it in there. So we are working on getting rid of that. Thing is, if you... Okay, so like just in general, if you have patchy spots, you know, you should be doing things like fertilizing, overseeding, dethatching, aerating and sun and water you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like just give it all the things that that can help Mm -hmm. and you'll get on top of it eventually and weed you know weed obviously yeah weedy said so with your beautiful wavy grass idea in the orchard do you not have a tick issue because that's the type of thing that they love we have ticks in our area but not it's not a concern ticks are not something that we like think about on a regular basis It's mostly like in the hills like if you go up to the mountains yeah or you know that sort of thing you know you can bring a tick home but like, even when I worked at the vet clinic, like seeing ticks and animals and stuff was so rare. Yeah. I can't even really even think of a time when I saw ticks. Yeah. I don't, they're not that common here. No. But they are. I mean, they're here. Yeah. We're not free of them 100%, but it's well, not. Well, it's like concern. how we have snakes. Yeah. But not. It's like, yeah, we'll have some garden snakes and, and there's rattlesnakes in the hills. And, but, like, there's not a ton. Yeah. It's not something that, like, we think about. Uh, April 2023 garden tour was the next video. Uh, It was kind of a winter interest garden tour, (laughs) to be completely honest. But we decided that we'll just give you a look at what it looks like right before we get some big color, hopefully, (laughs) with some tulips. We have spring bulb foliage up everywhere. Some daffs are blooming. More are coming into bloom every day. But our tulips are just kind of like, we're going to have them in May. Yeah. May tulips this year. Uh, Kirsten said, if you take out a large piece of grass, do you do that by hand or spray it out? Kill it with cardboard slash mulch? Yes, do it that way. We tried that for the first time this past year. This thick cardboard that you wet down and then you put a thick layer of mulch on top of it, on top of your grass. We did that in the North Garden and it's like the grass just disappeared. Yeah. Like everything settled, the grass disappeared and all of a sudden it's just like beautiful flower bed. The the one way that's easier than that is to get um, like a skid steer or a oh, tractor well, and for like sure. Well, sure. rip it up with that. But second way would be cardboard and mulch. Mm-hmm. And then third way, if you're an idiot, would be to do it by hand. <laughs> that sucks so bad. <laughs> 
What are you calling me? I've done by hand so much in my life. Kayla said, how many years have you been in this house and you've done all of this? You should do a video showing from start to current of the changes. Also, is that a bird bath? Is that bird bath a unique stone? I can't find it. The bird bath, the big white one that's up by our bird area is from Henry. And then we have a smaller, that other one's from Henry too, isn't it? The smaller one by the back shade porch. I think, yeah, they're both from Henry. I think they're Henry both from Henry. Here. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Something leaf bird bath. It is a good idea. And we talk about it, you know, every spring. The problem is we get so busy. The time that it looks the best is in the spring, you know, um, to show like the changes the, that we've... Before and after. Because if you get too late in the season, you can't, re you know, things get like so fluffy mm -hmm. that it's hard to kind of see the bones of, of the garden mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but we should go through one of our earliest garden tours. I was so shaky with the camera. Really? Yeah, if you watch those garden tours, it was just all over the place. And it makes me nauseous to watch them. Hmm. That's kind of been the thing that has made me not push to do it. Is because I just, I can't stand to look at that old footage. Makes it look, though, even more drastic of a I change. I suppose. I didn't have any gimbals back then. or Were you just hand holding it by yeah, hand? Yeah, just holding it with my hand. Oh, boy. And I'm shaky anyway. Like, that, well, after I don't a while, have a holding a camera, like, you get so sore. Well, now, like, yeah. Tired. We're holding the gimbal. Because oh. the gimbal's heavy, and then you're holding it away from your body. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, after a while, you're like, my back. <laughs> uh, Infinity Health Pilates said, I have a question. Do you do any other exercise, or is your active garden lifestyle or exercise? I should be doing you do, uh You do, like, stretching and stuff. Uh, Maybe not, like, consistently. Barely. But I see you doing it. Uh, yeah, the only thing that I do is outside in the garden, which I should do more, for sure. Ugh. Moondust said, I do wonder, do you ever worry about your cats eating the plants? No. Nope, don't worry about that at all. Stacy said, speaking of ponds, how are the plantings around your neighbor's pond? I don't know. We kind of checked on it. <laughs> we, haven't, we can kind of see the top of the pond from our house. I can see the black lace elderberry we put in. Um, most of it, well, not most of yeah, most of them were annuals, weren't they? So they won't be there back There some roses year. that we put in there. There were a few perennials in there. Yeah. Some shrubs. We well, had some hibiscus. We did that. Yeah. Maybe we should get back over there at some Maybe. point. A garden makeover said, love the tour. Would love to see one every month showing how much everything has grown. Question, does Aaron ever step on plants? Is he's following you around with the camera. Yes. I have never once stepped on a plant. I call baloney on that. Uh, Jean Marie, Jean Marie, Jean Marie said, I absolutely love your new settee and chairs. What is the bottle's name and company? Please share. It's the Carlisle set from Front Gate. That one, right? The new seats by the oh, kit back I, kitchen. You ordered it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it took us forever to get it. But it's I'm so expensive, wasn't it? Yeah, but you know what? Did you get it on sale. What? Did you get it on sale? I did. I did get it on sale, uh, but I also shopped hard. I shopped hard for a set. Like I don't even love the color. They're like just kind of creamy colored cushions, which. For us, it's probably a good thing because the cats have that creamy, like the hair that comes off, some of it's orange, some of it's that creamy white. So they show hair the least amount. Uh, but I got it because I like the lines of the legs and the backs of the chairs. And I knew I take a lot of pictures from backed up and I wanted a specific look. And I'm super picky about stuff like that. So, you know, if you find the thing that you like and then you wait, it's kind of like the Pottery Barn chairs I ended up with in the Hartley. Mm -hmm. I love those chairs so much and I kept going back to them, but they were so expensive. And I waited and waited and waited and then I got them, what, 50% off? Yeah. Sometimes it pays. Sometimes it does pay to wait. Sometimes it doesn't and you miss out. So it's kind of a, a risk. Uh, Carolina said, do your tulips come back regularly? Do you just replace them annually? Some of them come back really well and some of them do not. It's just kind of hit and miss and learning which varieties along the way do the best. Darwin types usually come back the best. Um, doubles, in my experience, like the, the Labelle Epox, which I love so much, are just like treat them as an annual because that's pretty much what they are. Um, Averons come back a little bit stronger than those. Brownies come back pretty good. We should do a video sometime uh, documenting like our experience with how long plants bloom. You know, does that make sense? Like how much of how long of a show you'll get from various things. It's so though depending though. Is it? I think so. It well, depends on your year. Our experience. And then there's so many different types. Like even in your tulip group, you've got your early, your mids, your mid yeah, late. Sure, but like with tulips, you're not gonna. It's not gonna be the difference between like two months and one month. You know what I mean? Like your tulips are going to last for like 15 days, 20 days, right? 
generally mm-hmm. speaking. It might go 25 days. It might go 10 if you have like a hard frost and they all die or something. Mm-hmm. So, but there's some things that last like all summer long. They just bloom and bloom and bloom. Yeah. And I feel like as a beginner, I would find that helpful to know what kinds of things I maybe want to like start my energy. So on a video planting. that's about things that are just long blooming. Yeah. Best bang for your buck for color. Yeah. Yeah. But I, kinda, I mean, it's also about short blooming things too, because I want to know the things that bloom short. They're like worth having, you know, like we plant, we plant tulips, Mm -hmm. even though it's, they're relatively short Mm -hmm. in terms of how long they bloom. Right. But like hydrangeas bloom, like once they come out, they just, they stay out the whole rest of the season. Right. Annuals, you know, Mm -hmm. you plant them once and then, well, every year, but you plant them and then you get like, for us, like five months of blooms out of them or more. May, June, July, August, September, October, sometimes into November. Yeah. So six or seven months, usually Yeah, half the year or better. So when you're thinking about like the money that you're spending on different plants, I I don't know, Mm -hmm. interesting video to discuss. He uh, said, what was the total number of trees that you planted last year? No, geez. I don't know. I I bet it was close to a hundred or over. Yeah. I don't think I could answer that question without really sitting down and thinking about uh, it. Do like arbs count? Do you want to talk about your arbs, Aaron? No. The I new ones you just planted? I think they're going to survive. Do you think so? Yeah. <laughs> they kind of have that, like, I'm dead cast. <laughs> <laughs> Did you water them? Or were you, re- were you, you know relying what? on rain? I was relying on, you know Never what? I was rely relying on, on nature. <laughs> nature just... Did not do you a solid. No, it didn't. <laughs> okay. Next video was, we're planting a big rose garden. So... One of the quadrants in our flower garden is going, it has become a rose garden for cutting. Um, so it's four cut flowers. It's not like a, like a rose garden that you go walk, I mean, you can walk around in this garden, but it's not like designed in any way. Like they're meant to be in rows so you can go out and cut them for flower arrangements. I find for me, setting a space up like that makes me feel more free to cut them as cut flowers. When I set them, when I have got roses in our flower beds, which I counted, I think we have roughly 100 roses in the rest of our flower beds currently. Uh, I don't like to cut on those very much because I planted them there for a reason. I want them there for the color that they're going to provide to that space. And so I needed, not I didn't need, I would, I wanted some that I could feel like I could just go out and cut every single bloom off that plant and it doesn't matter. That's what it's there for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so Lori said, whose idea was it? Yours or Aaron's? Kind of yours more than yeah, anything. I think it was mine. Yeah. You've always kind of been partial to rose gardens and kind of have wanted one. Yeah. And I think I explained at the beginning of this video, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but um, I've always thought of a rose garden in relation to tucking it into flower beds, like tucking it into the main design of your garden. Um, And I, for the reasons of not being able to cut them and that sort of thing, uh, I've just kind of shied away from it. Also the maintenance. When they're in our flower beds, I feel like I want them tidy all the time and deadheaded all the time. And I don't want a bunch of petals all over the ground. That's why I'm not going in around the Hartley. A lot of comments I saw there might be, I haven't read any of these yet, but um, I did notice some comments about like, why aren't you doing this around the Hartley? That's what the Hartley is for, is a rose garden around it. No. Rose gardens look awesome for like two weeks. Two or three weeks, they're at their peak, like in June, and then they flush out and they're kind of just green with sporadic blooms. They might flush again later in the season, but I mean, that's how they act here in our area anyway. They're just not like a long... They don't have the staying power. Yeah, they don't have the staying power. Um, so... For worth the, it to grow but yeah just, absolutely depending on the area you have right. to decide where you want the longest amount of blooms yeah and that's why i go so heavy with hydrangeas because hydrangeas they start to bloom and then they keep those same exact blooms all season long and not only do you get to enjoy them as they're just coloring up in the beginning they continue to change colors through the season all while not dropping petals or needing to be deadheaded. So that's why I go toward things like that, especially in high impact areas, because I want it to look high impact all the time. What's that one, the um, denim and lace? Russian sage. Russian sage. Russian sage. Uh-huh. Once that blooms, it's got a really beautiful, like bluish, you know, color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it just stays like that all, all season, season long. Yeah. I actually have two lollipop uh, rose standards, rose trees, I'm going to be putting near the Hartley, but uh, the reason I think those are gonna work is because they're structural. It's not just about the bloom for those, even Mm. though they will be beautiful when they're blooming, it's about that lollipop structure that's very formal to me. So I don't know, I just kind of weigh all those things out, but I'm very excited about this new space, trying out different varieties and seeing what happens. Uh, Stephanie said, how's the tooth? (laughs) It was still kind of hurting in that video. I haven't gone back in, but like, 
I'm talking fine today. I think maybe it was just like really swollen. I, I still need to go back in because I'm dealing like with sensitivity and like pain and stuff. Ugh. I know that's bad. I know I need to go back in, but I just rarely. You know what's funny is, do you remember you scheduled me an appointment at the same time? Uh-huh. And I was like, I think I'm going to cancel that. Yeah. Do you feel like you should have canceled yours too? No, because I couldn't oh, let you it were, go. You actually had an issue. You yeah. I had a cavity that needed to be filled. I never had a single cavity in all my years of life until I got pregnant with Benjamin. And then I started getting cavities. Just sucked the, the sucked minerals life. right out of yeah. me. <laughs> uh, Christine said, no area for vegetables any longer, just flowers. Well, there is some rhubarb in there. There's also some leftover carrots from last year. Uh, but I am designating a new space for some of those vegetables that take more space uh, because I just, you know, we're kind of refining that space out there and creating something that we really like. Um, so I just might have a big vegetable garden and a big flower garden. Be really fun. Karen said, absolutely incredible. I'm so excited for this garden space. The West Side still has my heart though. Is there any rose variety that you have that you are staying away from because of previous experience? Well, you're staying away from most like landscape roses because that's it, not right. Like the goal. I love the Atlas rose. I mean, I've shared it in videos a ton of times, but I have them already in my flower beds. So the ones I'll stay away from for the rose garden are anything that I already currently have in our flower beds. So yeah, I don't think like a single proven winter's rose has made it into the flower garden yet because they are the cut garden because they're all in our flower beds. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to repeat things I already yeah, have. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. They came out with those new ones. Um, what are they called? Uh, they've got the Reminiscent, Reminiscent series, series and then yeah. the Rise Up series, but I've got those planted Yeah. Mm -hmm. in the flower beds. Uh, Teresa said, aerial view is a nice American flag. Yeah, Anyone else see does, this? It? it does. Yeah, and it's funny too that land and sea, some of the bags were like not quite covered by the tarp and they were <laughs> like soaked with water. Yeah. So you'd see like a really wet, dark patch of land and sea and then like a dry bag would go out next. So it was very patchy looking. It looks so nice now. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's kind of well, uniform. I feel so good because like that land and sea has so much goodies in it that it's just gonna it's gonna soak down yeah. and like getting the rain that we've been getting yeah it's you all know good. that it's just yeah doing good things for the soil one thing i did want to mention uh the heirloom rose is actually brought to our attention is about oh, yeah. the bare root roses and granular fertilizer it's not normally a good idea now the ones they sent were not bare root but i was taking some out of like our nursery containers from the garden center that they came in bare root they'd been potted but they just had barely started to root into their containers so basically bare root when i put them into the holes it's not a good idea as a rule to use uh, granulated fertilizer with bare root roses because the fertilizer can touch the roots and burn them. Um, they said that I didn't use enough to make it probably a problem. Also with the organic biotone, it's such a mild fertilizer. But you know, when you do something like that in a video, you never know if somebody's gonna see that and then like you'll get a synthetic that's much stronger and then put a lot more of it in the whole. If some is good, more must be right. better. Yeah, you never know. So I thought I would mention that because it's something I'm not really thought of. I just plant things the same way I, I always have. And maybe I've lucked out because I've been using the right fertilizer all along mm -hmm. and not using a tremendous amount of it. Um, anyway, I thought that worth mentioning. I was, I'm always kind of happy to learn that sort of thing. Like what, cause they're obviously much more experienced than I am in the rose department. So Melissa said, what kind of roses are used to make long stem roses that are sold? Like hybrid tea sorts of roses. Cynthia said, when you mentioned a rose garden, I expected a beautifully lay uh, laid out garden to stroll through. I'm so, uh, so surprised to see a crop or production layout. Can you explain why you chose this layout? I'm sure it will be beautiful anyway. <laughs> it will be beautiful anyway, trust me. Uh, the reason we, I uh, kind of already talked about that. The reason we put it in rows is because that's the kind of the flavor of that area out there. That way, uh, I feel much more relaxed about it. It's not a place that's meant to be a formal, like stroll through the garden area. You can stroll through it and it's gonna be beautiful to stroll through, to walk down the rows and really like inspect all the roses and take a look at them. Uh, but I don't, I didn't want a highly laid out garden out there. I like the look of row crops. I love that. I love seeing those tidy rows yeah. out there. Um, so it just fits the space properly. You know, if we did something around the Hartley or back in the North Garden, I think it would need to be laid out to where, you know, there were different like planting beds, with the roses and have pathways and benches and things like that. Cheddar is trying, he's trying to climb up the, the bench back here. <laughs> <laughs> he's clawing my leg, this.
Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should have titled the video differently. Not I'm planting a big rose garden. Well, what else Even would you call it though? That that's what it is. It is a garden with roses in it. But I think when you you say rose garden or hear rose garden, you think of something like the one in Boise where you can walk around and it's designed and you've got walking paths and benches and like a, a fountain in the center. Yeah. Sort of a thing, which is not what we are going for in this situation well, at kind all. Kind of though. I mean, the grass pathways and stuff. Yeah. I think once those just like hold on yeah. until the <laughs> end of like, the season. Yeah, like nobody judge me by the grass in there. Yeah, because like when when you know we could have paid thousands of dollars and laid out uh, what do you call it sod. sod. Um, so when you when you seed grass, just it takes like a whole year for it to really like come in thick and get mm -hmm. it all weeded out. But once the edges are defined and oh. tidy, and it's. Yeah all the grass is not patchy it's gonna look so good and once you start filling in the roses more and they're actually leaved out mm -hmm. and leafed out mm -hmm. and blooming just gotta give it some time yeah and i don't expect big things from that space this year i mean we'll get a few blooms but you know i want the plants to really be focusing on root development and kind of getting getting their you know bearings for their yeah. new space uh, next year will be really fun Let's see how that goes but anyway yeah, it was just a really exciting project. I was, um, I don't know. It's just funny that sometimes you like resist something for so long until it just clicks. Mm -hmm. And out there, the way we're doing it, it clicks with me. It resonates with me because I know that I'm not going to be, it's not going to be a stress. If it was a formal rose garden, it'd be such a stress for me. Mm -hmm. I'd be, oh, it'd be like your grass thing. Like, don't judge my rose garden. I haven't yeah. had a chance to be out there in two weeks, you know? Yeah. I would feel like that all the time. Just give it a second. Yeah, and <laughs> I don't want to feel that way. If these roses, like, we don't have time to do something with them, doesn't matter. They're out in a space where they can just do their thing. Um, yeah, that, there's some freedom in that, and I'm all about that. And you guys, that is it for today's recap video. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you, Nature's Willow, for sponsoring today's video. We really appreciate that. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.